Little Dr. Poker has hatched a plan to turn everyone to a gay frog by injecting <laughs> you with an mRNA LGBTQ ad bull technology vaccine that depletes your testosterone and turns you into a rainbow amphibian. <laughs> uh, wait. Truth and lies. Oh, not LOL. Freaking crazy. I mean, what is it? The, the plastics? The one doctor on YouTube? Who, uh, who cut out all plastic from his diet, from food, from utensils, and his testosterone level went up 50%. If you're wondering what uh, testosterone actually does for you, like, uh, physically, be the difference of how you feel when you're 18 versus how you feel when you're like... 40. Hey, what? <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Wait. The Beatles. It's not working. So you can jump around. Okay. Oh my god, are these scientists with fucking... Are these scientists with vaccines? Oh my fucking god, what is this? Paul oh. McCartney that 50 years ago! What? Oh, I gotta shoot that guy, there we go, okay, we got him. Alright, now what? But the moon landing was a hoax. <laughs> Oh, I gotta get the guys behind me. Okay, all right, good. Oh, oh, oh God! Oh, he almost got me. Wait, the is that... The moon landing was a hoax. Is that what I think it was? That's the reason they promote Alex Jones as the face of conspiracy is because he's so ridiculous they would never promote... They would never publicly argue with, uh, like, Peter, PK, Truth. They would never publicly argue with Robin from How I See the World, or Red Silver J, or Kernsey. So they just promote someone like Alex Jones. It's like, uh, I don't know. It's like calling Trump the face of capitalism, LOL. Oh, I just masturbated again. And I didn't oh, use any pornography, so I guess that's uh, their inverse... Their oh, inverse shame law. <laughs> Wait. Oh shit, oh I lost my other big gun. I don't think it even matters. Okay, they're all dead. There we go, good. Say hello to my little friend. Oh, I see. So this is a, I got ammo for this. Oh no! Wait. What do I do now? Oh, I have to break it down. Got it. Nice. Nice. Okay, we're good. Machine gun. Wait, what's this? Virgin billionaire? I'm going to lower the world's population. <laughs> <laughs> They're just taunting me with depopulation in trade chat. Where'd Mr. Depopulation go? I can't scroll far enough. We are going to kill people and you are helpless. That makes killing people good.
going to lower the whole population. <laughs> oh my god, that's stupid. I'll eat your Wait, oh shit, I died. Mm, oh, I did. I'm going to lower the whole population. <laughs> and he shoots money at you. Oh, I destroyed him. I beat him. I thought you did computers, Limtard. This is really something special. Let me move my camera down a bit. Actually, uh, I'll move it up. Yeah, that should be better. Okay. Is that a dog? I'll eat your head! What? Oh my god! Oh, I got him! Machine gun. Nice! Okay, he's dead. Oh my... Wait, I don't know, how do I get him? Dude, I'm actually beating it. I'm feeling good, man. Woo! I've got to be slow, though. Say hello to my little friend. Oh, jeez. Okay. Okay, got him. Good. Oh, oh shit. Okay, got him. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I think I should wait for him to shoot, right? Wait, wait, he can use a knife? What? Say hello to my little friend. <sighs> Dr. Fuker? Who reportedly created HIV in a lab. That made HIV in a lab. Actually, wait, true. Oh, shit. Sort of. Not I really, but. I get it. Oh, okay, I thought I, could, I thought I was supposed to shoot it. Okay. Like Dr. Wilner was pointing out on YouTube, uh, what you call it? Oh, We've known high about high? Uh, HIV for. I mean, it's just a pretty high octane gameplay. It makes sense. But uh. We've known about HIV forever. So when they gave out uh, AZT, it started causing HIV in people who were he probably like heavy habitual drug users. There was some kind of drug that was going around uh, nightclubs in the 80s that was just like wrecking people. And then you put AZT on top of that and it destroys their body and then they get a... And then they get acquired immune deficiency. It's not that. Particularly yeah. Gallo and Fauci and Hazeltine. I mean, you don't like. Yeah, I'm just an idiot playing a video game. But he's a he was a PhD and an MD. And uh, Kerry Mullis, the guy that invented the. This is where they fact check and say, oh, the inventor of the PCRN test did not say that COVID, whatever. But like, what he did say was that uh, you you PCR test is like a volume dial and you can just t turn it up and find any disease you want that's in the body you're just replicating anything that's there so everybody a lot of people have markers for HIV that's why a lot of people who were uh, testing HIV not testing but testing for it to see what was up were getting like one day they were positive one day they were negative so we gave people their death drug and then, I mean, that's that's your government at work, so. Fauci was behind that. Again, I hate to condemn somebody so heavily. Like, that's just super, right? So, like, he's got the demon brain bugs. And you can see it in his smirk. 
and Essex, and the rest of these scoundrels, of the particularly Gallo and Fauci and Hazeltine and Essex, and the rest of these scoundrels of the worst order. Criminals guilty of genocide, without a doubt. I invite them to take me to court. I wish Burroughs Welcome would take me to court, because they have been putting out a killer drug knowingly. Because in a court of law, I guess somebody in the, in the audience just that we couldn't hear said, well, then sue them. That's better take them to court. That's the trouble with that, right, is Freemasonry owns all courts, so you can't really expect any kind of justice. I know the, the dude that infiltrated my family was a lawyer. I'm sure there's plenty of honest lawyers in the world, but I bet they wonder why that one case went so weird. I would have the opportunity to, pro to provide the absolute proof and evidence, as I have in my book, Deadly Deception. Now, I'm not alone in what I'm doing here today. How does the press escape such obvious truths? Because they're sold out. Why would the finest virologist in the world, the most noted virologist, member of our National Academy of Sciences, Peter Duesberg, why would he put his entire career on the line? What did he have to gain? He's already lost his laboratory and his funding. He can't take away his professorship because he's tenured. Why would a Charles A. Thomas, professor emeritus of Harvard, say the same thing? Why would Carrie Mullis, who won the Nobel Prize in virology last year, why would he stick his neck out? What did he have to gain? You get a little bit paranoid with the conspiracy stuff, but Carrie died right before COVID. He might have been a huge whistleblower. These are the questions reporters should be asking. And in order to sell a book... But why don't reporters ask questions? Reporter! Uh, where do we go? I mean, this is what I was just playing yesterday. Uh... Why don't reporters ask questions? Because when there was an explosion at the Berkeley protest, the preset explosion, these guys, like this is where the explosion's happening. There's the military guy saying, we're going that way. But so that's the explosion that ha like this is, this is how they do news, right? So why didn't this guy expose COVID? Why didn't this guy expose COVID? Why didn't this guy expose COVID? Why didn't this guy, why didn't this guy with the boom mic expose you know, where is the press? The press is busy faking these things. The press is sold out. They can't... They're scared, like the, uh... Like the New York Post people who got the anthrax letters because they were publishing articles about Bush's daughters after 9-11, so ISIS decided to send anthrax to the New York Post. I suppose they're scared. I don't know. I would inoculate myself with a virus that supposedly is deadly? Ever think that maybe we all know something that you just don't get? That if you... That's he was going around uh, with an HIV positive person and sharing a needle with them in public. He did die a year after this, but it was from a heart attack. And he was perfectly healthy and never acquired immune deficiency. But yeah, we, we've known about 
HIV since like the 30s and it was showing up in people who were starving because once you're like super sick your immune system fails that's his whole point right if you watch that video your immune system begins to fail when you're not healthy and then like any little virus will screw you up so there were there were these there were poppers whatever they were going around in uh, clubs back in the 80s and that's where HIV was showing up and then they started giving them AZT which was a cancer drug that was outlawed in the 50s because it was killing cancer patients so they started giving AZT to HIV patients supposedly people who tested positive and then all of a sudden they're dying and they're like ah oh, say look like that's that's our actual and then like this is how Freemasonry works right like their excuse back then was like that was the, the like it's gay people who cares like that was the fundamentalist line this was Freemasonry doing it. Now, like, tides have turned, so now they're like, oh, LGBTQ. It's how they do again and again. Like, they're the people who own slaves in America, and then, you know, civil rights happened, and all of a sudden, now, now in 2016, during the presidential election, they're telling their insiders that they're the people who fight for, uh, for social justice because they fake police shootings of uh, black men right in time for elections like it's no nothing to do with social justice everything to do with injustice everything to do with hiding their crimes against humanity people are about to talk politics and they say oh my god look this guy who was in a, a porn video with a pre freemason tattoo on his chest got killed by a cop in the street wouldn't you rather talk about that than the social economic problems of syria because people just aren't equipped for those things, so they, they... And you just like to talk to people, right? It's a natural thing, so you're just like, Ah, man, did you see? There's a dude who's gonna piss next to your daughter in the bathroom. Way easier to talk about than, uh... Freemason bioweapon attackers are doing whatever in what country they're false flagging. Take the virus out of the equation. You have a perfectly understandable disease with a perfectly understandable answer. And I might remind you, in case you are not aware of it, and if you haven't read my book, that we have known what causes acquired immune deficiency diseases for at least 70 years. It's and this was in 1995. It's there for you to read. Number one cause on the face of this earth is malnutrition and starvation. That's Africa. Look to the headlines of the October 3rd issue of the London Times, Sunday Times, last year. And the inside headlines that screamed across two pages, the plague that never was. Speak to Philip and Evelyn Krynan, who head partage with an organization of 250 people, their own hospital, their own doctors, their own laboratories, who have lived in the heart of the epidemic, supposedly, or the supposed epidemic, for five years. There is no epidemic. It doesn't exist. They are there. They're not some character who goes through from the World Health Organization and says, oh, I've seen the people dying. Of course you have. We all saw them on television in Somalia. What do you think you were looking at? That was AIDS. Due to starvation. Due to malnutrition. It's no big secret what's causing AIDS. We've known it for 70 years. Number two is drugs. And don't just think of street drugs. Because the number one cause of AIDS today is actually two medical drugs. AZT. A drug that was discovered in the 60s as a chemotherapeutic drug for cancer and was shelled because it was too toxic to treat cancer, a drug worse than cancer, to be used to treat people who are immunosuppressed. Now let's go back to the other causes of AIDS. So it's not only street drugs but medical drugs, but now three is radiation. Whether they worry about it, Chernobyl and Nagasaki and Hiroshima. But number four is chemotherapy. Number four, 
The number four cause of death of acquired immune deficiency diseases, chemotherapy. And the most toxic chemotherapeutic drug of all times, AZT, is what they're now using to treat AIDS. And the Concord study completed last year. Now, can you imagine saying to the world, where were it in the press? Where are you people? Here, they're giving a drug that costs thousands of dollars a year, and it doesn't do any good? That's if you want to believe that. But did anybody here bother to look at the insert, the paper that comes with the drug? It's a DNA terminator. It means it is a terminator, just like the movie. It terminates life. You terminate DNA, you terminate life. And they talk about side effects in the insert. When are you going to learn there is no such thing as a side effect in medicine? It's an unwanted direct effect. And you know what one of the unwanted direct effects of AZT is? Lymphoma, cancer, one of the diseases of AIDS, as they call it. Oh, another so-called side effect, which is really an unwanted direct effect? Pancytopenia. You need a definition? Pancytopenia. Pan. All. Cyto. Cells. Penia. Loss of. Loss of all your cells. That's AIDS. That is the definition of AIDS. So AZT, by definition, by their own drug insert, causes AIDS. And nobody survives AZT. That will eventually lead to your death. And they've cut the dosage way down. Because it was killing them too fast. It's like giving somebody a uh, large... So this is the same thing that they're doing with COVID, kind of, sort of, with the uh, 5G? Like, like, COVID is only existing because of the side effects of EMF poisoning again. When COVID first started, when COVID first happened, there was a nursing home in Holyoke, Massachusetts, which I, I, like, with that Pepsi challenge thing with the other video, like, that's where the demonic blocking of these things is it's just, like, like with that guy doing over here and the kids doing the high five. Like, that's just... But, uh... Oh, my God, I lost my train of thought. LOL. <laughs> you guys press the kill switch again? Oh, yeah, so, like, it, it's in Holy Oak... But, like, it looks like holy yoke, right? Which would be a Christian, like, take my yoke, it's... Anyway. But, uh... Yeah, I, I just... This is where I depart from, like, you know, like, be obedient to your leaders kind of thing. It's just like... But they're Nazis! Like, that sounded bit back then, but... We've since had Hitler. Anyway. Nursing home in Holyoke, Massachusetts... was a clear one mile shot across a field, not quite one mile, across an empty field so there's no interference. It was a veteran nursing home. They probably like make an excuse, I, I, I don't know, that, that, that they have a right to kill veterans kind of thing because they've signed military contracts. I'm sure, like, they're, they're just like completely bizarre like that, but uh... 90% of the people in that nursing home when COVID started died of COVID but they had just put up a brand new 5G tower a mile away from it so people who were susceptible it was probably a combination of their virus and and what they're trying to cover with their virus which is again EMF radiation poisoning freaking crazy dose of strychnine and they die within five minutes and so the next person you give them a, a, a few drops of it and they last four or five days and you say strychnine is a wonderful drug this person lasts five times longer this is the kind of thing that they present to the world now i have offered for over a year now and i continue to offer it one hundred thousand dollars to anyone who will give me one scientific document that proves that hiv causes any serious disease it doesn't. It is a scandal and a scam beyond belief. 
The virologists who are responsible for this, what do they have to gain? Now, I don't know what Duesberg had to gain, or Charles A. Thomas, or Harry Mullis. He already got his Nobel Prize. Why does he come out and say it? And he's the one that found the test. The uh, PCR reaction. And he said that there is no body of evidence that supports that the virus causes any disease whatsoever. But what about the individuals who have perpetrated this lie? They are all multi-millionaires. What do we have to say about the National Institutes of Health? When a private laboratory, independent laboratory, found AZT to be 1,000 times more toxic than the laboratory of the NIH. We can understand a 5% error in a laboratory, even a 10% error. But an 10,000% error? Or 100,000? That's freaking crazy. 1,000% error? That's fraud. And as I understand that the word has gone out, and there's even documents and letters to prove it, that the CDC, the same organization that let blacks go untreated with syphilis, well documented, just to see what would happen with the disease. This same organization who had to admit that they can't give, on an, give in on the AIDS thing now because nobody would ever be able to trust the government. I think the last election tells us what the people think about government. But science is that's, acting. I up. mean, that's the. I mean, that's the demonic attack. That's the like. That's the lies that they use, right? Like it's like, oh, if if the people who bioweapon attack the planet weren't organizing things, what would people do? Like, like they're only grifters, grafters. Like they're only the corrupted. They only like you know normal people do normal good things because they've been taught normal good things and they enjoy. It. But then like once you get like the mind control, mind fuck, mind torture, Freemason. Like program and like, you just start buying like oh well we we own the u.s government we're actually so now all of a sudden they're policing right now all of a sudden they're plumbing but like people do those things anyway it's just it's such a false like choice people are good without people being evil No differently than politicians do. And now we have disease by politics. Isn't it strange that the same day or the day after Robert Gallo filed for a test for HIV after it was announced? This sounds like free meditation. You mean he just happened to have this test available? And so the same day or the following day? I mean, it's just over and over again. Same things happening with COVID. Again, my joke, but like, I'm serious about this joke, is probably when they were doing COVID, Mr. Sharman was like, yo dude, you're gonna do a bioweapon attack, I, I need in on some of these profits, like, I, I need to run on toilet paper right now, otherwise I'm gonna talk. <coughs> he filed for a patent? He had a test. He was simply looking for some kind of a disease he wanted to apply it to. And that test. 30,000 Russians who tested positive for HIV were then tested with another test that's supposedly far more accurate to confirm the positivity. And 66 out of 30,000 proved to be positive. That means that the test... That's, I mean, sort of what I was talking about. There was videos on YouTube where you could find the people actually going around to HIV clinics. And it's, it's long since gone. They, they scrubbed so much, but uh, people were going around to HIV clinics and uh, like getting more than one test in a day. And like it would be like negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So it was just a, it was just a crapshoot whether your life was absolutely ruined. And now it's like, you know, like, all of a sudden it's, 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 <laughs> if, if you were alive for when HIV started, right, a pandemic, there, there's no reason that it tapered off. There's absolutely no reason. There's no evolutionary genetic reason. Like, people didn't get exposed to it, so they didn't develop natural immunity. There's no reason that it would have been breaking out in gay nightclubs, is what they said at the time, and then just stopped, right? 
right now, if if it was the disease that they said it was, it should be everywhere. Like every other person on the planet should have it by now. It's not like people got less promiscuous or anything. Test HIV is 99.997% inaccurate. <laughs> you want to take a test that's 3,000 of a percent right? And you're going to rely on that? But that's what they're doing to people out there. They're taking a test that is not only invalid, it's totally misleading. In fact, when you get results like that, then I would say you're going to be more correct that if your red is being negative, consider yourself positive. And if you're positive, consider yourself negative. By the way, at the request of many individuals, I did go for a test a couple of weeks ago in New York City at the biggest clinic there that does more testing than anybody else. And the doctor who ran it was bragging about the fact that he did more. When I told him about the book I wrote, he said, shh, don't say anything. My patient's not here. Okay? I tested the negative. <laughs> and of course, Fauci said that you need, well, when he was answering what I did in uh, Cleveland. Yeah, when he says Fauci, he's saying Fauci. Like the man's name never made the headlines back then. Or not much. Ago, he said, well, he's going to have to stick himself 300 times to transmit the virus. Where are you people in the press? 300 times to transmit a virus? You cannot have an epidemic under those circumstances. If you can't transmit it by blood, you certainly can't transmit it sexually. Unless you're into real sadistic acts during sex. I don't know how much blood you want to draw. It's literally unbelievable what they're getting away with. How does the press let this go? Oh, an epidemic. The United States government says 12,000 people died each year. From 1985 to 1992. Now, a child in public school will tell you an epidemic starts out in one year. You got everybody involved. That's where they would put it. 12,000 a year for seven years in a row? That's not epidemic. By definition, it's endemic. And you would expect in seven years, considering it's spread sexually, that you'd have probably 15 to 20 million. We're a pretty active country when it comes to sex. We like to put it down, but we sure belie it in that behavior that we do. Oh, an epidemic, really. In Russia, 105 deaths from AIDS since 1987. In uh, Philippines, 80 deaths since 1984. Epidemics? Was... Again, that's what was happening with COVID, right? It was uh, only breaking out where 5G towers are. Again, it's a real virus, but the real virus is there to mask the side effects of... They, they went and genetically engineered a virus so that they could roll out their 5G towers, and when people were like, oh man, I got a lot of brain fog since that happened... You know, you would put together the obvious association. But, since they did their, uh, their bioweapon attack, now people are like, man, I've been run down ever since I got the jab. Man, I, I feel sick ever since I got COVID. There's no epidemic. But who has to gain from this? Dr. Duesberg? What is he gaining from this? That alone should alert the press to who's telling the truth. And if you hear an argument amongst politicians and one calls the other names and doesn't answer the specific charges scientifically, who's the liar? Fauci and Gallo, instead of answering the scientific conflicts and contradictions, that Dr. Duesberg has so brilliantly pointed out, instead of answering them, they call him a homophobe. I mean, same exact thing they did with COVID, where, like, you know, people questioning science were labeled anti-vaxxers or something. Or, like, a lot of people who were questioning, 
me personally, anyway, I don't want to get, but... They label them a crazy conspiracy theorist, they dismiss it because they promote people like Alex Jones, so people think that, you know, the idea that they conspire is insane. The same way that they promoted the idea that the Earth is flat, and they put it on YouTube after 9-11 Truth videos, back when YouTube had a lot of 9-11 Truth videos. So that was, I don't know, 15 years ago. They couldn't censor as much as they could now. So instead of censoring, they just stuck in, up next, Flat Earth. So you just find out your government did 9-11. You're not good at f physics. You're not good at science. You're not good at... And then they tell you the Earth is flat, and now you're weaponized, right? Now you're, the government did 9-11, and the Earth is flat. And then people are like, ah, ha, ha, those crazy 9-11 people. This is what they do over and over again. This is what they did. They documented that they did this in the 70s with uh, COINTELPRO, where they were infiltrating civil rights movements to discredit them. There was that one letter where it was like the implicit question was, uh, what was it? Like, since this woman's pregnant, are we going ahead with destroying her? Was what it was. So there was like a FBI agent with some morality, and he's like, yo, this woman's pregnant, are, are we going to destroy her? And, like, the memo was like, yeah, we're going ahead with that. Can you imagine? I can call the homophobe, too. I wonder. I come here with a message of hope. To not only the gays, but to the blacks, and the Hispanics, and the all the other... This guy's 6, 70 years old in 1995. Heard a different language back then outcasts of society which strangely enough are the only groups that have been connected with the so-called AIDS because you see if you belong to one of those groups you've got AIDS but if you don't belong to one of those groups you get the respectable diagnosis of you have tuberculosis you have lymphoma you have leukemia you have the sarcoma you have a cystic pneumonia 30 plus diseases where is the press do they buy a story that a virus knows what country it's in? <laughs> Three symptoms in Africa, but 30 diseases in the United States and Europe. How do they buy the story that a virus has prejudices? It prefers men over women nine to one in the United States and Europe, but men and women equally in Africa. It knows whether you're gay or straight, married or single, black or white. It should be hired by the immigration department because it does one heck of a job. This is what they've been feeding to the public, and this is what you and the press have published. It's funny, every time that I've stuck myself with a needle, I get calls from major television shows by excited young people who want to tell the truth. And then I get a call three days later telling me that it's been mixed at a higher level. That's no surprise. After all, who am I fighting? Two drug industries. One supposedly legitimate and the other illegitimate. And they do an awful lot of advertising, the supposed legitimate one. All those things out there that they sell for your colds and everything else, that's the pharmaceutical industry. And they also put out prescription drugs, most of them. And they pull the purse strings. And so we have a better propaganda machine in the United States than Hitler had in his time. You see, Hitler pulled off a lie, and he was condemned for it by most of the world, although believed by three major groups of the Axis powers. The liars and killers like Fauci and Gallo and Hazeltine and Essex and Flotte von Stahl and the market officials, these people are getting by with the lie and getting paid immense sums of money for it and praise from the rest of the world while they murder. The study at the University of Miami was completely fraudulent. 
You see, I believed that the virus caused AIDS from 1984 to 88. And I treated AIDS patients. One of the few doctors willing to. The doctors were scared for their lives to even treat the patient. And by the way, sticking my finger, nothing new. I did it lots of times in treating my AIDS patients. That's, I mean, the... The second, lar or does he say that here? But the second largest population of AIDS patients should have been doctors, right? Or should have become the largest population. And in fact, it's amazing that, in spite of the fact that we are at such great exposure to this deadly disease, the incidence. It's. I mean, what he just talked about with the praises. They also use praises as a weapon, right? On 9/11, it's glory, glory, glory. On. Uh, with COVID, frontline heroes, right? And then once you wrap yourself up in that, that that's also like a, <coughs> it's kind of like a, a check on if you would, would like expose it later, right? Like if you find out something's fishy later, you'd be like, oh man, you know, you just feel like awful about yourself. So you don't even wanna. Of the disease amongst medical personnel of all types is less than the general population. This is a first in the history of science. Think about that. How is it possible? Maybe the virus has nothing to do with it. Not only maybe, the virus has nothing to do with it. In 1988, I was invited to a dinner where Burroughs Welcome was going to push AZT as a drug for treating AIDS. And we were told we could ask questions during the dinner because Margaret Fischel was going to be speaking. And when she mentioned that the drug AZT had 56 side effects, I raised my hand. And I said, Dr. Fischel, how do you do a double-blind study on a drug with 56 side effects? You've got to know if you're on the drug. And she said to me and the rest of the doctors sitting there, well, the placebo had 31. And I raised my hand again. How could a placebo have 31 side effects? How could an inert substance have 31 side effects? I didn't know what was wrong then, but I knew there was something wrong. I knew there was something dreadfully wrong, and I didn't know how dreadfully wrong and how deadly wrong it was. But the answer came years later. The FDA, as you probably know, released AZT after four months of a proposed six-month study. They cut it short because one group in this double-blind study where nobody knew who was on what, one group was doing better than another group. And so out of compassion, they terminated the study. I don't blame them for that. And sure enough, the AZT group was doing so much better than the placebo group. And so they released the drug. But then 18 months later, their own investigator from the FDA brought back his report. And guess what it showed? The participants in the study knew the first week who was on the drug and who wasn't. You didn't have a double-blind study. It wasn't the Cadillac of studies. Not only that, some of those on AZT admitted to sharing their drug with members of the placebo group. I mean, this just belies the whole ethos of Freemasonry, right? <coughs> People who knew they were going to die, <coughs> very likely to die, were assured by people that like they have a death sentence. Like, at the time, it was just a 100% death sentence. And you think that you're on a drug that may possibly save your life, and you start sharing it with someone else and taking half the dose, like just selflessly. It's not like these people were, you know, it's not like anybody ever heard about that. That explains the 31 side effects in a placebo group. Some of them were taking AZT side effects. But, and by the way, that makes it a complete washout as a scientific study, right then and there. The drug should have been discontinued, called back. But then came the kicker in, the, in this report. The individuals on the AZT in the four months of the study 
received six times more blood transfusions than the placebo group. What happens when you get a blood transfusion? You look better, you feel better, and you live a little bit longer. But the most important question and lesson from all of this, you must ask the question, why did those on AZT need six times more transfusions in a four-month period? And this is why the news likes to highlight, what I was just talking about before, this is why the news likes to highlight disastrous stuff, like uh, my friend was just sharing the meme about people, like 20% of people will do the only, 20% of people are morally equipped to do the right thing when told to do the wrong thing like here's just a a double blind study where half the participants were sharing then the individual they love to share negative stuff because it justifies blood. their evil right oh those we those need to be club evil to elite. and coincidentally they made you look a little bit better and healthier than the other group and then after i go through all this invariably someone's gonna ask the question so what really causes aids and I have to say it 10 times or 20 times in my book, and I'm going to say it again now. We have known for 70 years why the other individuals in the study died. The number one cause is malnutrition and starvation. Well, to an extent that was true of some of these individuals, but only true because of the second reason. The number two cause is drugs. You recall, you fellows and, and gals in the press, a couple of weeks ago, you reported in your newspapers that we were killing off our senior citizens with too many drugs. And how do you cure them? You get them off the drugs. And how were these people dying of so-called AIDS? From the number two cause, drugs. Both medical and street drugs. But one in particular that stood out and has been linked by 24 scientific papers with Kaposi sarcoma, and that's poppers or amyl nitrite. It's very rare that you see a case of Kaposi sarcoma in Africa because they don't use poppers. And this is the first disease, human disease, we can't give to a simian monkey. And I'm talking about legitimate diseases. Because you see, the virologists have been coming up with more diseases than you can imagine. And haven't you bothered to notice most of them never pan out? They disappear from the headlines and they're never heard of again because they weren't diseases really in the first place. Like SMON, a disease in uh, Japan, for 15 years they pursued viruses. And what did it turn out to be? Enterobioform, a drug for diarrhea that they were using over there. Amazing, isn't it? And they spent 15 years in luck. Again, 2015, Brazil went off-label with uh, vaccinations, gave vaccinations to pregnant women, and then they had a microcephaly outbreak eight months later. That was blamed on mosquitoes, the Zika virus outbreak just happened to coincide with when they were giving women vaccinations while they were pregnant like that's the they always they just zigzag and don't get caught because their sacred cow couldn't be responsible for a microcephaly outbreak especially right before they were doing their bioweapon attack i don't know how far in advance they plan these things but lots of millions of dollars but guess what our virologists have done the candle to no one. For 20 years in Nixon's war on cancer, they spent over $20 billion looking for a virus that caused cancer. And they came up empty-handed. They not only couldn't find a retrovirus, which was the ideal choice, because it doesn't kill cells, and it's multiplied by the cells, which is what cancer cells do. But they never found any disease that it caused. But guess what they chose for the scam of AIDS? A retrovirus. Already $20 billion in 20 years, we found nothing that it does. And we also found that absolutely it doesn't kill cells, because if it did, it would commit suicide. It needs the cell in order to replicate, to be alive. So the epidemic would be over before it began. It's impossible. 
But this is the virus. They've just spent another $20 billion in only 10 years' time. And they're asking for more. In 1995, billion meant a whole ton of money. And now they want to give us a vaccine. See? Oh, well, they make money with that. They not only have a test for HIV, which, by the way, is not for the virus. It's for immunity. Like they're saying, it's the first disease in the history of medicine. When you're immune to it, you're going to die from it. But now, they want to give us a vaccine. To test HIV, test for antibodies, not for the virus. Well, antibodies is what you get when you use a vaccine. You want to produce antibodies to fight the disease. I'm at a loss to understand. If we already have the antibodies, why do we want to create the antibodies? Kind of redundant, isn't it? Oh, by the way, if you take these very same antibodies and you put them in Gallo's culture in his laboratory, he just ruined his multi-million dollar culture that he's making a fortune out of. Because, you see, these antibodies destroy the culture. Does the press uh, bother reading? Do they understand the English language? And yet you want to condemn me and say that I'm out for publicity? Well, what is it that Peter Duesberg is out for? He held the reputation and still the most honest scientist as being the foremost virologist in the world. What is Carrie Mullis out for? He just won the Nobel Prize. Why does he want to put at risk that incredibly marvelous reputation of being a Nobel Prize winner? Why would he put that at risk? Unless maybe there's still some honest scientists around. Now what about the rest of them out there? You know, I, I often ask myself the question, if my children were still in school, and I had house payments to make, and I had to put them through school, etc., would I be doing what I'm doing today? I don't think I've ever answered the question because I'm, I'm kind of afraid of what I might answer if I was going to answer honestly. And he who's without sin shouldn't be casting any stones. So I won't cast the stones at the thousands and thousands and thousands of virologists out there who are going along with this scam. Because, you see, they would be out of jobs if they dared criticize Margaret Heckler. That's, I mean, that's what I was talking about with the News Garden article about the, uh... I don't know if I can find it just on search, but... Your post has false information. Yay. There you go. News Garden. This article right here. After 9-11, I think it was four people. I can't even read anymore. It was four people who died from the anthrax letters, and two of them were writing articles like this, and then two of them were Senator Daschle and Leahy, who were the two senators leading opposing, the two opposing senators, the two lead opposing senators to, uh, to the Patriot Act, right? They did 9-11, they got the Patriot Act, like, you used to, like, it, when I was a kid, the idea of government surveillance was anathema to Americans, right? Like, everybody, Democrat, Republican, was like, the government has no right to look at you, spy you. Like, that's what you're taught because that's the First Amendment. Second Amendment, Third Amendment, I don't know, right to privacy. <laughs> anyway, I forget. <laughs> I'm so fried. 
but yeah, like, they don't even t teach that. They've been cooking my brain. But, uh... But, but, but. But, but, but. Yeah, like, they, they just don't teach that anymore. Now people are like, oh, yeah. Well, if, if you had nothing to hide, you wouldn't care that the FBI can watch your daughter shower. I'm, I'm using their tactics here, because I'm mad. But you know what I mean, like, if you had nothing to hide, you wouldn't mind that we rape your brain with electro-torture to see what you're thinking. Hey. Anyway. Or the heads of the NIH. They'd be out of jobs, and they'd have families that they have to support, and futures that would be down the drain. You don't cross the establishment. And so, the lie is being perpetuated by the silence. And even Gallo would say to the press in answer to the question, what does he have to say about Duisburg's challenges? And he says, well, if we're wrong, why do so many people believe us? I mean, I could just see uh, Hitler and his stormtroopers. Like, they really use the same, like, words every time, right? It's, just, <laughs> it's amazing. The consistency of, uh, I don't know, the snakehead, I have no idea what it is that causes people to... Saying to the press, if we're wrong, why does everybody do what we tell them to do? Because they're running the show, and you're looking at not just a simple lie of science. In the back of my book, I have the picture of Pedro Ticino of Spain, father of two young girls, a hemophiliac. Nothing wrong with the man. But because he received so-called tainted blood, they had him on AZT. I stuck myself to get that man off AZT. I said, if I stick myself with your blood, will it convince you there's nothing to worry about? And Pedro Casino, now over a year later, is very healthy, having a wonderful life, enjoying his two young daughters. But all of his friends are dying or are dead. This is real. And I don't blame those scientists out there keeping their mouth shut because their jobs depend on it. And I understand that exists in the press, too. But you've got organizations. And in a way, so do the virologists have organizations. And if enough of... I will say it's a way different paradigm, uh, your job depending on it, when it's global 5g ai mind control like bioweapon attack that started war in israel and like it's it's a it's a different paradigm than like silence is not just it's nice that he has a very uh liberal like view on this but like it's not like they're not coming for you right it's not like they're there's gonna oh well your town won't have the 5g ai mind control tower the honest ones would stand up and take that chance if you all stand together you make a statement and you can do that in your press associations even though the people who own the newspapers and the television shows are afraid of losing their sponsors you can at least keep your dignity that's the choice you have to make and that's the choice that i have had to make I figured that if I didn't do what I knew was right, I'd end up cutting my throat shaving in the morning. Because I wouldn't be able to live with myself. And that's the honest, simple truth. I am sticking my finger to bring attention to the current Holocaust. And it's a dreadful one. When you terminate the DNA of a human being, they waste away and die in an inhuman fashion. That's what our bioweapon attackers are doing. I mean, that's uh, I was just watching the Dr. Campbell talk about, and and these people are confused, right? Not that he's confused; he's a brilliant doctor, but he thinks that it's side effects of the thinger, but 
it's really that the Thinger's side effects plus their bioweapon side effects are there to mask the side effects of 5G AI EMF poisoning. I say AI because that's what they've been using against me, right? Let's, uh, sorry, I shouldn't close that. That's this video here. That's, that's what they do. Again, with the demon block in here, like, this is where it's just, like, lined up. Vector on target. Again, I keep, I keep telling them, like, like, I'm not your problem, right? Your problem is something bigger than me. Your problem... I, I, I don't like using the idea of God as a threat. Like, I don't think that's a real, like, but... Like, your problem is that you're working for demonic things, you know? Where the heck is... Where am I going? Why does it go to I? Is there a way to yeah, there we go. I'm so I'm so omega fried. <sighs> oh this was uh this was the day after I mean right, that's the reminder. Oh no no not that one. That one that one's probably me being paranoid. But where's uh my friend Borb one day? Oh yeah. So this is this is the second time that they There's a friend my friend Borb in WoW PvP one night is saying, Season 2 is so boring. I go out the next day and here's the guy. And this is right across the street from, uh... So this is like your government. This is bioweapon. This is gang stalking. It's supposed to... With the torture, it makes people suicidal. It makes people question reality, etc, etc. But anyway... Where's the other one? This is how daffy I am, right? They've just, like, that that's the demon possession, too. Like, I should take these things way more seriously. Except they hollow out, like, like here. Like, their arch. He gets towards death and he can't speak anymore, and those things are working full force in his brain. His whole life, they told him what a super champion he is for Lucifer, whatever it is, and once he gets towards death. But anyway, where's, uh... Where's my hard evidence of gang stalking, mind control, torture? Uh. Oh, here's my gravel pit gang stalking. LOL. I was compl I, I just I had just taken a picture of a gravel pit in my front lawn because yeah, this is the picture that I just took in my front lawn and then and then the YouTube comment. Where'd it go? Oh yeah, Gravel Pit. So it was like 20 minutes ago when I'd taken the picture and then Gravel Pit replies to you. Like, that's, they do that all day long to me. It's like normal people, like, that's just a coincidence, but they do it all day long to you. So, you know, you're well aware of it. Where is... Oh yeah, this is... So this is the first... Stalking level 1000. <coughs> the day before this, I was thinking, thinking to myself, at least I ghost them. So he cut me off at this traffic light that had just turned red whenever. It took me a minute to get my camera out. So we were all parked here. So by him cutting me off, it parked my car right here. And I was just thinking, at least I ghost them. Oh my god, wait, 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 look. Oh. And then that's like the, the mind control, like, look here, right? It's like when I watched the Predator movie, <laughs> like, did someone experience this? Look over here. <laughs> but anyway, this is this is a I don't know I I I sometimes assume Egypt right like there's the documentary where uh, the woman was like everybody who ever went to Egypt anybody who ever invaded Egypt got absorbed like indoctrinated by Egypt and that's uh that's the one Bible thing right the sins of Egypt clinging to people. And they, these guys seem like that's like Bush Senior there. It looks like he's got, he looks like he's got the demon possession that I have. Or it's just like pulling your face apart from the inside. But anyway, I, I don't know. I'm going too far into the weeds. I don't know.
I lived a nice happy life when I was a golden rule person as far as religion can, goes. That's all I can say that I believe in. I, though, I, I do like the... You combine the golden rule with the Jewish golden rule. The negative golden rule. That which is hateful to you. Don't do to other people. Because yeah, like otherwise it's like, oh, I love being loved, so I love to love you, and I'm going to love you, and let me love on you, and I'm loving on you. You just don't get how I'm loving on you. And you're like, no, go away. <coughs> but yeah, so I think you combine those two, and you've got yourself some good uh, life lessons. But these guys here, all these guys here is uh, that which is hateful to a person, make sure you do it extra so that you torture and break them and destroy their life and blah blah blah. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs>